Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, welcome. I'm Basola, and I am a pro makeup artist here in the DC metro area. And I'm a nerd. I love TV shows and movies. Like I'm like I really really love them. I have another channel that I was doing um, TV shows and movie reviews, but it just got too much. I can't do this channel and that channel and work full time. Not right now, anyway. So the concept of that channel, I'm merging it onto here. At least as one channel and I can handle it. And I can still do my makeup and talk about TV shows and movies that I love. So that's what we're going to do today. As you can tell by the title already, we're going to talk about WandaVision. <sighs> Hopefully by now everyone has seen it. And if you have not seen it and you're watching this, that's on you because this is obviously spoilers. Um, but no, honestly, if you haven't seen it, I think you should watch that first before you watch any video on this show. I need tea. Um, so let's just let's just get started. I already did my brows off camera because that would have taken too long. So. The MCU is finally, 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 finally back. I'm so excited. Oh, oh my God, guys. I am so excited. And like once the theme song started, I have a sound bar. I had to turn it all the way up so I can like just feel it in my soul how I would feel it <laughs> if I were at the movies watching this in Dolby. That's that's what I did. I was I told my brother to turn it up. But anyway, um, I'm not going to be talking about um, each scene word for word or anything like that because one, this video is going to be too long. Two, we're doing two episodes in one. And yes, there are plenty, plenty, plenty of other people that have done um, a review, a recap, discussion already. But I'm doing mine. I'm a couple of days late, but whatever. I'm doing mine. Um, I'm so happy about this. I really, really like the show. I've watched it four times right now. At this point, I'm probably gonna watch it again. Um, I really like it, and I think a lot of us really like it because it's so clever. Um, I like the idea. So let me just say, if this is your, like if you just happen to have Disney Plus and you didn't know what this was about and it was just a new show, just, Enjoy the show because it will make sense to you. It will it will start to make sense. So if you're confused, like, well, I thought this was like a Marvel show, or and you went in here expecting action, that's not just give it a chance, um, and you won't be disappointed. But for I feel like the show starts off really meta, or if you watch, if you read comic books. I feel like to you, this might feel very meta and you know exactly what's going on. But obviously, the writers are going to take us for a loop. Um, whatever we think is going on may not be. A lot of people have great ideas and great theories, which the storyline seems like the one we already know from the comic books. So I say all of that to say, don't stretch yourself if you feel like you don't understand what's going on right now. Every single person on the planet doesn't know what's going on with the show. Okay, we're all just, you know, we have theories. Some of us know that, like I said, some of us know where this story is kind of deriving from, but they're still going to do what they're going to do as far as the writers go. So I like the I like the direction that this is going in. So when this starts, you see. Um, the I was is this what I want to call it, the theme song? For the first episode, because I've seen, we've all seen at this one, the first and second episode, you can tell that every episode they're going to have um, like a specific theme song or a specific show that it's being mirrored after, so to speak, each episode and each era. So episode one was more of the 50s and like I Love Lucy-ish type show and like, yeah, that's what I would call it. And then the second episode started off like late 50s into the 60s of like uh, Bewitched. That was the, 
what am I trying to say? The intro, the theme song. But the, it seems like they're going to have one for every episode. And I really, I really love the concept of this. So, before we dive in into every single thing that happened in the episode, I just want to say, I think Wanda is in this dreamlike state. And this is what she's envisioning. Um, envisioning. Um, I feel like she's using this sitcom to, like, for her illusion right now that we're in with her, she is using sitcoms, either these are the shows that she watched, and those are, like, perfect worlds to her, and that's what she's trying to recreate in her head, and... Or is just um, whenever her and her brother were in that cell when they're, they're uh, the guy that gave them their powers, so to speak, from Age of Ultron. Maybe that's what he was playing for them. And that's all she has an attachment to. But I think it's the first one. I think this reality of her having a perfect life in a sitcom style is something she probably watched from when she was younger growing up and that's what she sees as the American dream or a perfect life or a perfect world in perfect suburbia and that is what she's playing out for herself. Because at this point, listen, from the first and second episode, we already know this is not real. Wanda could try to play herself, but we know it's not real. And I think the only person that knows what's going on for sure, for sure, or that has any control of anything is Wanda. So let me backtrack a little bit. She and Vision, you know, they start off the episode as newlywed couple. <laughs> And I just thought it was really, really, I thought it was really cute. They had this like early morning montage of, was it, a, no, it wasn't. They were just having dialogue and he was getting ready to go to work. And I think, was he the first one to notice something on a calendar? Or maybe it was her, I forget. But... They notice something on the calendar. There's a heart on the on August 23rd. Um, and they're both trying to figure it out. Like, what is today's date? Like, what is going on? Why do we have this on the calendar? And neither one of them seem to know, but they both lie to each other. Right before that, uh, Wanda is telling Vision that, or, yeah, she's telling him that she's going to make this elaborate breakfast and what does he want after she already mentions it and you know he's kind of like well nothing because I don't eat <laughs> ma'am what do you mean and this is just to me showing us the beginning of her illusion because or her dreamlike state whatever we want to call it because when she opens the fridge she says that makes sense why there's no f food in here well yes because you don't eat either. So what? This, this to me, it felt like that was the beginning of their, uh, what do you call this? The beginning of their illusion, so to speak. So, I mean, side note, if you can't already tell why I have this wig on, because it's the 50s, and I decided to throw this on, whatever. It's going to get styled when I'm done. Um, so... So after they going back and forth, trying to figure out what it is, lying to each other like they know what's going on, Vision leaves for work and Wanda goes closer to the calendar to try to figure it out. Like, what does this date really mean? She gets a knock on the door and, you know, the knock on the door was fine until the knock on the door got annoying to me real fast because, first of all, do you pay any bills here? Why are you knocking on this door like this? Ma'am. <laughs> she was knocking on that door. First of all, you knock on my door like that, you're not going to get an answer. That's number one. Two, 
Don't be annoying. But we can already tell what's going to be. We just knew by the no by the knock of that knock. <laughs> you could already tell that she was going to be an annoying neighbor. And lo and behold, as soon as Wanda opened the door, opened the door, she was just an annoying neighbor and she would not shut up. She just kept soon. As she invited herself in, introduced herself, invited her, invited herself in and started asking 50 11 questions to Wanda, ma'am. And one thing I noticed by my second or third watch, every time you ask Wanda a question where she has to uh, think about something, it's like she comes undone, so to speak. Because the first time it happened, you don't really notice anything. She's just like, huh. She was really trying to think about the answer. like, But uh, Agatha. Agnes um, just kept asking questions. So kind of, I would say, kind of just dismissed whatever Wanda was thinking about. I'm like trying to think about all these names, so many people, but not enough. She's asking Wanda all these questions. She's like, did you use them? She just made a couple of jokes. I thought the mother-in-law um, joke was pretty funny and I just want to say so far Paul Bettany Elizabeth Olsen their chemistry is so good I'm like I love how we're gonna get all these shows and it's gonna allow some of the smaller characters from the grand MCU movies to shine and we can we can see both of them they have amazing chemistry um I don't think they were underutilized in the movies because they served the purpose they were supposed to serve. But I feel like in the show, they're doing, like, oh, the chemistry is so great. It's so, so, so good. And um, Catherine Hahn, oh, my gosh, she's amazing. She She's, like, playing up this annoying uh, neighbor so well. And I just love it. I'm here for it. I really, really, <laughs> I really like it. She's, like, everyone is just playing their part so excellently and uh, I can't wait for the third episode anyway she's playing the annoying neighbor asking all these questions and then she she probes a question about you know kids all these other questions but we're not supposed to like dwell on it because it's just the first time anything is being mentioned um basically she's just she's being a nosy neighbor Okay, so they go over to, what's his name? Vision's job and his job. First of all, the transitions in the, in the first episode, well, in both episodes, but the transitions, oh my God, from scene to scene, I love it. Um, so they go to Vision's job, compu what is it, computational services? And when I tell y'all, I cracked up. I thought it... <laughs> It's just so clever. Um, so a computer working for computer services. How grand. So anyway, we see Vision doing his job amazingly well, super fast. And when he's done, he's asking his coworker. So this is where, I feel like this is where certain things, you just kind of have to give it the side eye like, wait, what? Because for someone so smart, this is how I know Vision is also not, what's the word? in control or he ha I feel like he has some kind of control I think but how right those are questions we need to ask ourselves but vision is the only person at this job asking some type of question that makes sense what do y'all really do here what do you do here what is your job out like what do you do like what are the actual results so for someone so smart that was a stupid question but for someone to not be in control, that was a smart question to ask. Because why are we here? What are we doing at this job? <laughs> Vision is like, I want to know. What is, go what is going on? Anywho, um, his co-worker is basically giving him answers. And he's still like, okay, sure. Sure. Sure, that's what we do. And then his boss comes out of the office and as soon as the boss opened the door he sees the uh <laughs> he sees the name 
on the door. And it clicks. Oh my God, this is what is on the calendar. I'm going to need to give, you know, they're, they're chatting here and there. The boss also makes some jokes that works for me. And I actually laughed. Like some of these jokes, I mean, they're there on purpose, but I, I actually laughed out loud. Um, when the boss said, you don't have any skeletons in your closet, do you? <laughs> and Vision said, I can assure you, sir, I, have, I don't have a skeleton. I thought that was clever because he doesn't. Vision just out here the whole time telling the truth and people think it's a joke. <laughs> but um, that happened and right before he calls Wanda, they pan over back to Wanda and a nosy ass Agnes that won't mind her goddamn business. Agnes, ma'am, you're doing too much. I just, I just met you today. Why are you all in my business? I don't trust anybody. The only person I trust is Vision, okay? I don't trust anybody. I don't trust Wanda. I don't trust her. I, not one person in, in this episode do I trust except Vision, okay? Okay, so back at home, Agnes, like I said, is trying to help our good sis figure out what today is. Well, she's not trying to help her figure it out, you know? To Agnes... What's her name? Wanda is already figured out. Oh, yes, it's my anniversary when she was asking her the back and forth question. And she's like, I can assure you I'm married. But she's basically like, OK, this is what we're going to do. Since you don't have any plans, I am here as your nice, lovely neighbor to help you figure it out. So they pan to commercial. This, that was like my, they pan to commercial. And the commercial was okay i'm gonna stop my makeup real quick so we could talk about this the commercial was a stark industries commercial and i noticed any of this like it was certain things i was like huh that's interesting and then the second episode i really really know not second episode this my second viewing i really noticed it that when the commercial started you know it started as like a nice almost seductive commercial um and when they were talking about the toaster you know we can see the light blink everything is still in black and white so the light is still blinking black and white but when the lady pressed down the start button when she pushed it down to me immediately because i remember saying it to my brother um immediately it sounded like tony's uh reactor like when he's boosts up to fly that's what it sounded like to me like that sound that it played when she pushed it she pushed the toaster down that's what it sounded like and then right after they and it, it just sound, sounded like a beat like three different times that i watched it it sounded like three different things it sounded like just a regular ticking clock just a regular ticking clock and then the next one it sounded like it was just like counting down to something and then the third time it sounded like a bomb was about to go off you know like well not a bomb we don't know what a bomb is but it just sounded like it was counting down to something explosive but after the man was saying what the toaster could handle well i think it was after or before the lady said this machine. She didn't say this toaster. And I want to know why she said this machine. Because as soon as she said that, when I looked the next time, I remember her saying machine the first time I watched it. But the second time I watched it, I was looking for like some kind of clue. Because <laughs> I was going to write this in my notes. But I was looking for some kind of clue when she said machine. Um, when they kind of zoomed out, like they pan and zoomed out a little bit, the toaster itself has a face of a robot on it like it looks like a robot and then after the food montage that he said the food can handle or the machine can handle um the light on the toaster started blinking red so from episode one and episode two every time we saw color the most color that we saw was red okay so i was like why is this blinking red I thought about that. My my third time watching, I was like, okay, this commercial is very, it's very important. 
So that happens and the commercial is over and we see that it's Stark Industries, obviously. Well, not obviously, that, that wasn't obvious. It was just Stark Industries. And for me, the third time I watched it, I was like, okay, this is supposed to, maybe that button that she pushed down, I'm sorry, I feel like this is a, a little rant, ramble. Um, but the third time I watched it, I was like, this is Stark Industries. To me, it makes sense as to why it sounded like Tony's reactor when she pushed the button. Is it, is it just me? It is nighttime, okay? It is nighttime, and they are trying to get into this house. Wow. Everything just dropped, okay? Um, his boss, Mr. Hart, Mrs. Hart, and Vision are now in the WandaVision home. And, <laughs> I mean, I guess it's just for us to be able to see, but to me, their house didn't look that dark for Wanda to not know that that was not Vision. Like... But, I mean, I guess they're the only two that live in that house. So, who else would it be, right? So, I understand. But it's just, like, ma'am, you don't see this lady standing in front of you before? <laughs> I just thought it was funny. I thought it was really funny. And I'm just like, girl, Wanda girl, that is not your man. Back up off that man. So, anyway, uh, she got on this sexy outfit and basically... She, after she covers the uh, Mr. Hart's face, eyes, uh, what is this boy's name? Vision plays it off like, oh, that's just how, you know, Sokovians greet people. And <laughs> y'all, to me, this is really, it just was really funny. And the wife basically called her husband uncultured, basically, because... They were just like trying to figure it out. Like, why is this lady acting crazy? And, or, yeah, why is she, why is she acting like this? And they kind of like played it off. It's almost like every time something happens, something weird happens, they play it off. And all of this is a clue. I'm telling y'all. Anywho, um, they basically invite them to come in and sit down and they're doing that vision and Wanda go in the kitchen and she's expl uh, he's explaining to her like that's what the date was um on the calendar and that he must have abbreviated it on the calendar and you know what Wanda has a great point y'all both have magic powers or you have you both have powers why are you abbreviating anything how lazy is that how easy is it to write on your calendar it's just y'all to me it was so weird how is it easy it is like she said to write on the calendar or just instead of abbreviating like she was definitely right about that like sir you played yourself and you played us so i guess them both, him not mentioning it on the phone and him not uh, writing it properly on the calendar, we can say Vision took this L, okay? It's his fault. So, anyway, she's like, okay, I'm going to figure it out. He goes back to entertain the guest and... <laughs> oh, it's so funny. So, she obviously is going to seek help from her new found friend, Agnes. Okay, Agnes is going to help her. Agnes, I don't think Agnes minds helping at all because she's so damn nosy. So she comes back in, in the house, and she's basically, ooh, she's basically t t giving, what's her name? She's basically giving Wanda tips on do this, do that, and Wanda's just trying to get her out of her house. Like, okay, 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 I got it, I got it, I got it, thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. And 
Agnes is not trying to leave y'all. Agnes is like trying to be nosy. So it was one thing she said. I caught it after the second time I was watching. Um, Because in the first instance, I just noticed things that I think would have been obvious to everyone. Like, huh, like the commercial or just like a little Easter egg and a little nod. But it wasn't anything significant. I caught this the second time. (laughs) The second time that I watched it was when she was explaining everything to Wanda and she said this or dang I forgot I didn't write into my notes properly but basically oh she said the recipe would be done in a snap those are very specific word choices in a snap so we know Agnes knows something because the snap can mean two things to me anyway the snap could either mean you know because Wanda does everything in a snap when she's doing her magic or when she's using her powers or in a Thanos snap right because other than that she could have just said These are easy recipes. Why does she have to say snap? Hmm? So anyways, uh, eventually Wanda is able to get uh, Agnes out, out of her damn house. So she's out of there. She's like, okay, let me, let me get started in getting this meal done but she's out here you know in a panic all the pots are opening so it sounds like you know she needs help and mrs hart bless her heart she was about to (laughs) pun intended but she went to go help or she said she wanted to go help in the kitchen and (laughs) visions yakety yak panic song y'all I listened to it I don't even know how many times it was just oh my god Paul Bettany is so good it was just so good it was so good and Mrs. Hart was over here she was dancing I was just like this lady is so clueless she did not know what is going on she's so clueless and I love it um so at this point Wanda is like okay I gotta stop playing games and I gotta get this together and while she's trying to figure it out, um, here comes Agnes knocking on her door. She was like, well, I knocked on your, <laughs> it's kind of like a sitcom joke to me. Well, they'll knock on the back door and no one answers. And then they go on the front door or whichever one was the front door or the back door. But <laughs> she's like, well, I knocked on the other door. No one answered. And then Mr. Hart was like, who's that? First of all, this is none of your business because this is not your house. Anyone can knock on my door, okay? He was getting on my goddamn nerves asking all these goddamn questions. Mr. Hart, whatever happened to you in this episode, you deserve it. You deserve it, okay? Because why are you asking so many questions, Agnes 2.0? Why are you asking so many goddamn questions? He was rude. And I was like, he got to go. And go he did, okay? But he was just, uh uh-uh. Who's getting on my nerves? Who is that? And they both, you know, because they, they're not in the same chapter of the same book. They gave both different answers. I was just like, oh, my God. So Wanda tries, you know, earlier when she she was with Agnes and Agnes was giving her all these tips of how to seduce your man or your husband or whatever. And she tried that and she seen that didn't work. And, you know, in her head, she's like, uh-uh, we don't have time for this. So she goes in the kitchen. She's like... I got to get this under control. So while she's in the kitchen telling herself that Mr. Hart is in the living room trying to like belittle vision. Because, you know, now at this point, Mrs. Hart is like, my head is spinning. I don't know what's going on. And Mr. Hart is like, my head, my wife's head is spinning. I usually don't, I usually don't like for that to happen. It's like, well, who likes for their wife's or their spouse's head to be spinning? Sir, shut up. Anywho. Um, he says that to Vision and, you know, Vision is having a little panic mode and I was like, oh, poor Vision. Poor, poor Vision. 
if I look crazy right now, trust the process. She now has eggs, you know, because she had all this little panic things going on in the kitchen. She burnt the chicken, and then she went back in time, and then the chicken were basically now eggs. <laughs> but wouldn't it be one chicken? Where did she get all these eggs from? It was just one chicken. Anywho, she had all the eggs. And then remember in the in the beginning of the episode, or in the morning, should I say, when she was asking Vision if he wanted this elaborate breakfast, and he was like, no, because I don't eat. That's what she ended up making for dinner. So as Mr. Hart is over here trying to belittle my friend, I love Vision. <laughs> I really love him. Um, and she's over here trying to be little, I mean, as he's over here trying to be little Vision, like, well, you know, you might not be in management type after all. He was over here trying to scold him. Wanda was getting that meal together. So he's talking shit and Wanda is basically like, booyah, dinner is served. Okay. And Mr. Hart once again was about to complain that dinner served. Breakfast for dinner his wife was like, uh-uh, basically, this is what I took it in. Shut your ass up, because we've been here, and this is what they can serve us, so we're going to sit down and eat this food and mind your goddamn business. Author, mind your business. Okay? So, um, they're delighted, and Vision is like, let's make a toast. Oh, wow, this hair is going to annoy me. Um, He's like, let's make a toast. So, they make a toast, and... Before they can even sit down and pull the chair inward to the table so they can enjoy their meal. Mrs. Hart is asking 5011 questions. Okay, see, when y'all start to ask this girl 5011 questions she, and she starts to think about it, she gets upset. Well, something is like about to break, okay? Something is about to shatter. When she has to focus on more than one thing and you're badgering her with questions, something starts to happen. And... Um, she's asking them, where are you from? How did you meet? When did you get married? Blah, 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 blah. And as her and Vision are trying to figure it out, Mr. Hart, asshole ass, okay? Mr. Hart is like, what? he's just, at this point, he's badgering the questions, okay? He's not even asking the questions anymore. He's badgering the questions on them. And... You know, Vision and Wanda both are trying to be like, well, where are we from? How did we meet? When did we get married? How long have we been together? Blah, 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 blah. All these questions that, you know, neither one of them have the answers to in that moment. Um, it just was getting too much for Wanda. And uh, Mr. Hart was like harping on, okay? He was harping on the questions. Very, very, very aggressive, might I say. And Wanda chokes him, okay. <laughs> because he only started to choke when she looked right at him. So it's safe to say that she choked him, basically. Like any time, like I said, any time people are asking her too many questions and whatever is going on in her brain feels threatened, she, she starts to like... I don't want to say malfunction, but that's that's what I could think of right now. Um, but basically, she's like, y'all asking me too many questions, and I don't know who you are, so please leave me alone, basically. And um, he starts to choke because she choked him. And this is where we can see that something is very, 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 very wrong because... Once he starts to choke, Mrs. Hart is saying, Arthur, stop it. Arthur, stop it. But as she's begging him to stop it, he's not the one. He didn't decide to choke on purpose. It was Wanda that choked him. So you see the Arthur stop it turns to just stop it. And at this point, she looks terrified. She's pleading. Um, she's pleading with Wanda because... It looks like she's still talking to her husband, but she's basically pleading to Wanda, like, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. Like, begging her to stop it because it's like 
when stuff like that happens, that's when people become aware of what's going on. Because even, this is how we also know this is happening in um, Wanda's head. Because even Vision couldn't do anything, you know, on his own. He didn't have the power or the capacity to move until Wanda snapped out of it. And she was like, Vision, help him. And until she said that, Vision didn't do anything. This is to show, to me anyway, to show that she is the one in control of whatever is going on. And um, whenever she decided to help, quote unquote, Mr. Hart is when Vision got up. Because even he looked so terrified and he looked so scared. So Vision got up, went to go help Mr. Hart. And cha, Vision helped Mr. Hart. Mr. Hart got up, looked at the time and it says time to go. Like nothing happened. Wanda, what are you doing to these people? So it's like as soon as that happened, everybody snapped back like nothing happened. Like this is very weird and it's very creepy. Ma'am, what are you doing to us? What are you doing? What are you doing to these people? What are you doing to them? Anyway, uh, <laughs> Mrs. Hart, she covers Wanda's face, like, you know, in the greeting of goodbye. So she leaves. She is so funny. Oh, my God. Everyone in this episode, they hit the, just they just hit all the comedy notes and chops and cues that they were supposed to, like it was in the sitcoms. And it just was so good. Oh, my God. I love the episode. Um, so, like I said, they left. And then it was the lobster on the door. Oh, my God. It was just so much. Agnes, why did you? They left and Vision and uh, Wanda, they sat on the couch. They were talking like, we're not a usual couple. Well, no, duh. Yes, <laughs> we know this. You guys are weird. Anywho, um, it's like she was telling herself that, right? She's trying to tell herself we're not a regular couple like the other ones, but that's okay. So, you know, they have their cute little speech. They got married on the couch, so to speak. Um, she gave them a ring and, you know, pans out to, uh, to, to the end of the show. And then we go back to our aspect ratio and we can see that someone is watching them. And on the left of the screen, you guys, I'm sure some people have watched Easter eggs videos and you have seen all the explanation that some people have given, but I mean, clearly if you read the comic books, you know, they, I would say in Sw sword is like shield, but sword is like for outer space. Um, I'll say intergalactic special, special powered people, but just like in the ending sequence in the ending <laughs> sequence, there is the same colors repeated over and over again. That is making all these pixels of what I would say maybe Va Ooh, I said Vonda what Wanda is envisioning vision and there goes that word again um like the house the ring the it was just a couple of things that you know was an illusion for her and those colors were red green and blue because there was a part the whole screen is blue and then there's a red color and there's a blue color so i need to know what the significance of rgb like you know color the rgb colors we see everywhere when especially if you use like photoshop or anything like that you know what rgb is um I just want to know what the significance is. Like, I keep trying to think about it. I'm not trying to watch other people's video to, like, make my own video. I try to wait till after um, to see, like, huh, maybe we're all thinking the same thing. But I want to know what that is about. I want to know. Okay? I want to know. I want to know. And I want to know who ends up. You know who I think is watching her? Because they showed her in the preview, but they haven't showed her yet. But I could be wrong. I think it's that, um, oh, my God, I will, I will insert her name in the picture but it's a girl from Thor. I can't remember her name. Is it Abigail? It's something. No. I don't know. I don't know. But someone is watching them. And someone is watching them through whatever Wanda is projecting. Whatever she has conjured up as an illusion or a dreamlike state. Because to me, that's also what this world is like. It's so perfect. It's like a dream. Um, 
And sometimes, you know, when you're, I'm an avid dreamer. So I feel like sometimes when you're dreaming, everything is so perfect, but something starts to happen, which is affecting your reality. It's like when you have to go pee in your dream, you also have to go pee. So you got to get up and actually go pee in person. I mean, in real life. So I feel like when people are asking her too many goddamn questions, it's reality trying to seep in. Okay. Let's move on to episode two and episode two is where shit starts to happen so the second episode you know i recently saw a interview with kevin feige he's talking about some of the reasons why sorry <laughs> talking about some of the reasons why they you know chose to go the sitcom route and i just thought it was like really nice and clever you know it's from he was saying he remembers when he was younger watching Nick at night and stuff like that. And they just thought it would be clever to incorporate some of that in the show. I think it's pretty clever too. But it just goes to show that they're putting a lot of, you know, they're taking their time. They're putting a lot of effort into the show. And it's not like the Marvel shows that have been on other networks before. Because, like, I tried to... Not to be shady. I tried to give Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. a chance. I think I saw the first episode. I don't know. There were some characters in there, that, like actors in there. They just they did an amazing job. And after a while, I was just like, eh, I'm okay. But this, it just started off really, really good. So I think it goes to show, like this show goes to show how good and fleshed out these smaller characters are going to be in their own show. I can't wait to see the other ones. I'm so excited. But he was just basically saying, you know, from when he was growing up watching that, it's kind of something that inspired them to kind of go this route. I'm going to use a red blush. Okay. Oh, let's highlight first. So, the beginning of this episode <laughs> was really funny. So, I would say this is the part where they're doing, like, late 50s, early 60s uh, for episode two. So, the beginning of the episode, they hear a loud noise. Or before that, uh, Wanda hears a, a noise. We didn't hear that noise with her at first, but she heard it. And she's flickering the lights and vision opens his eyes he's like boo are you turning on the light on and off on and off with your powers and she said well yes I am <laughs> and he wants to know why she's like I, I heard something so he gets up to go check it out. <laughs> he gets up to go check it out and he's like I don't see anything but your nice rose bushes so while he's still talking, another loud thud goes off. <laughs> and Vision, I, I think, to me, this is like my favorite part of the entire episode where he jumps <laughs> and runs back in bed. Vision, are you not a robot? What are you scared of? What? I was like, somebody come get him. Somebody come get him. I was like, what? why are you jumping? What are you scared of? Anyway, I thought that was, oh, the show is so clever. There are things that they're doing that's very clever. They want you to know that they're being clever. And then there are other things that they're doing that it's very, like, it's like, for me, I will say it's like, it has dual meanings. So it's just so good. <laughs> sorry if I keep saying, oh, well, I don't take that back. I'm not sorry. But I just keep saying it because it's true. So, she says, I'm going to check it out. And honest to God, when she said that, I was like, okay. She's about to go outside and she's about to, you know, magic away, whatever it is outside. My good sis <laughs> opens the window. I thought she was going to get up to go check. She opens the window. I was like, oh, my God. Girl, you could have done that yourself. After they went back and forth. Talking about some, yeah, want someone should go check. I don't know why Vision didn't go check again. But anyway, I really thought she was going to get up. She didn't get up. She opened the window. And um, 
My cheeks are pretty red. That's what I want. So, they just, she's like, oh, it's just the tree, because then the tree made it sound against their window again. So, they both think it's just the tree. So, she joins the bed together, because realistically, that's how your parents sleep. And I'm sure at that time, that's how, you know, in the 50s, in the shows, the beds were separated, like your parents slept on separate beds, which is very confusing to me. But... You know, Vision thanked her for redecorating, and <laughs> they go. That's when they go into the episodes theme, animated, bewitched kind of thing. Okay, so after this, they show. Uh, they show them rehearsing. So they're about to rehearse for this talent show that they're gonna have later on for the kids, for the children. Uh, so they're practicing or they're rehearsing. Oh my God, this is another scene where, when they were rehearsing, I just, oh my God, Paul Bettany and Elizabeth are so good. Their chemistry is bang on. Oh my God, it's so good, it's so good, it's so good. They excite me, okay? They excite me. Ew, what is that? They excite me. They're really exciting as a couple to watch. The chemistry is really, really great. So when um, when they're rehearsing, Wanda brings out the wardrobe. And the wardrobe, clearly not understated at all, has the same stone that Vision has on his forehead, which is the mind stone, right? Um, oh, is it time? Mind or time? It's one of them. I forget. That Vision has on his forehead. And they make it very obvious. It's the most obvious thing on that wardrobe. So basically, she's talking about how they want to appear very normal to their neighbors um, and to the community because she wants them to fit in and look like every other person or act like every other person in the neighborhood. And Vision is like convincing her like we already do. No, you don't. Basically trying to tell her, I think my lips are next, so I have to talk before I can apply my lips. So, ouch. So, they practice a little bit more. She's telling him we want to fit in. And he's like, I mean, you know, it's just a magic trick, blah, blah, blah. But she basically listens to him. And she's like, or well, he basically listens to her, <laughs> should I say. And she's like, okay, well, I got to go. I got to go, you know, meet Dottie. Or I got to go meet Agnes and I'll see you later. And he's telling her, I got to go to the public library to meet the rest of the fellas. So we, or this neighborhood watch, so we can get whatever is going on in the neighborhood under control. So he leaves. And as she's tidying up, she hears a loud bang. So in her perspective, right? She only hears the bang, but right before the bang happens, we can hear one to us or to her, it sounds like a lawnmower. But then if you listen closely, it sounds like helicopter blades. Okay, helicopter blades. And then when she goes outside, that's what she finds. This is another thing that we see that's in color, that's red. And as soon, up on the first view viewing, when, I, when we were watching it, as soon as I saw that, I told my brother, I turned to my brother and I told him, I was like, why do those, why does that look like Tony Stark colors? This is the second time that something Tony Stark in my brain has happened when we see this red color and it looks like Tony Stark's colors. And then the second time, I, because I didn't even notice this the first time, the second time I watched it, I was like, 
Does that say 3000? So it looks like Tony Stark colors. We see the sword logo, which is like, like I said earlier, Agents of Shield, but Agents of, Sh of Sword, I was gonna say Sword. Um, we see their, like their logo basically, um, or their emblem. And I was like, okay, we see that. This looks like Iron Man colors to me. And then I see 3000 because the third time I watched it, I remember seeing that says 3000 again. So I'm just like, oh. this is a hel helicopter. I feel like that we saw in the previews that crashed. And, and I think either it crashed or what's her name? came. Yeah, it crashed. And um, what's her name came out of it? Monica Rambeau, who eventually called herself Geraldine. Either she didn't remember or she lied on purpose, but we'll get to that. So as she's checking out this helicopter, this is the only thing that we see in color. Um, she's like trying to figure it out. She's trying to think so hard about it. Um, what is her name? Agnes pops up. She was like, oh, would you look? It's the star of the show. And... <laughs> In that instance, it makes us think we're talking about Wanda, like Wanda being the star of the show. But no, she was talking about Senor Scratchy. And Senor Scratchy is her little white rabbit that she says played Jesus last winter. Ma'am, why is your animal playing Jesus? Because you're a witch. Okay? Because you're a witch. You're a witch. You're a witch. You're a witch. Okay, you're a witch. <laughs> um, so she was, she was talking about Senor Scratchy. So... I'm thinking, this is after like me watching it three or four times. Three to four times. It sounds, sounds like I said three or four times. Three to four times. And just like thinking about it, this could not have anything to do with it. But I'm thinking it has to do like with one of the, like, you know, because in the comic books, or if you don't know, in the comic books, I think Agnes is Agatha because of that little brooch that she wears. She is a couple of outfits, like wardrobe choices that they've made that kind of matches her from the comic books. That's why I think, and like a couple of my friends that I've spoken to about it also think that's who it is. And, um, you know, she worked for Mephisto. So a lot of us think that's who it is. That's who Senor Scratchy is. But anyway... They go to the meeting, the, I don't want to call it a town hall meeting, but the meeting that they're going to have for the fundraiser later for the children. In this episode, they kept saying for the children, for the children, for the children, for the children. And there are no children in this town. We have not seen, not one person's child, but they're doing everything for the children. Why are they doing everything for the children? Why? There are no children here, but you know, hmm, hmm, foreshadowing. Anywho, um, so they're going before they get to Dottie's place. Also, right before that, the mailman walks past and I'm like, I feel like he's also he's also on it. He's not just the mailman. Because first of all, Agnes, why is she checking out the mailman? Agnes is messy and I don't like her. Like I said, the only person I trust here is Vision. OK, OK. I feel like Vision is harmless. He's the only person I trust in this little illusion that's going on. He's the only person I trust. Anyway, um, they are right before they get to Dottie's place. Let me put on my lipstick so we can talk so you guys can get the look. So walk into Dottie's place right before they get there. Um, Agnes stops to warn Wanda that, you know, basically... Dottie is basically the queen bee of this town. And I feel like if Dottie also isn't someone that's important, they wouldn't have made it a point to even show us that and tell us that. But I especially don't trust her either, um, Dottie. I mean, I already don't trust Agnes, but I don't trust Dottie either. I don't trust, like I said, I don't trust nobody. Except vision. Um, anywho, she gives her a warning, like just make sure you're on your best behavior. She makes a joke about is it the way she was dressed, and <laughs> Agnes said, "Yeah, but it's nothing we could do about that now, girl. You, it's nothing we could do." So she gave her the little spiel, just 
you know, watch your back, watch yourself, say all the right things, act normal, but just don't be yourself. Because when um, she made a joke like, I'll just be myself, Agnes was like, girl, don't do that. Don't be yourself. Why would you do that? Don't play. Um, so when they get there, everyone's giving a speech. Well, not everyone is giving a speech, but, you know, everyone is saying what they're, they've done, what they're doing. Um, and Wanda is staring. <laughs> they show Wanda staring her lemonade or iced tea or whatever it was. It was iced tea like Dottie was because, you know, she's trying to fit in. She's trying to look normal. Trying to fit in, look normal like the rest of the ladies, just trying to blend in like a regular housewife. Um, and while this is going on, Vision is over at the public library with the rest of the gentlemen. They're over here gossiping, and Vision wanted to get to the bottom of what is going on in the neighborhood. But eventually, he starts gossiping with them too. He calls Jones a communist. He probably is. Um, so, <laughs> I thought that was funny, but he probably is a communist, okay? In that little world that they're in, he probably is a communist, okay? Um, so, in the men's gossip room, basically, in the public library, when they're supposed to be having a serious meeting, they start joking, and they thought... What's that guy's name? His coworker was like, well, you know, I kind of thought you were stuck up, blah, blah, blah. Or I thought you were a square. He is a square. He's a robot. Anywho, um, that happens. They start getting along with Vision, and then they gave him a big red. A big red of all the gums, a big red. Every time we see color, all we've been seeing is red, okay? We're about to see Wanda's powers, child. Her powers are red, too, so you know. What was she doing up there this whole time? Let me know if you know where that's from. Anywho. He's chewing the gum. Somebody makes a joke. And then they pat him on the back and... Good old vision chokes on the gum. <laughs> and then his systems start to like get a little woozy and kind of, I don't want to say shut down because if it shut down, he wouldn't be alive still, would he? So his systems didn't shut down. It just was, it was a little woozy. It wasn't working right. So that's him, AKA, AKA him being drunk. Um, I forget at one point where the, uh, the commercial. So another commercial happens, and this time it's for a watch. And the watch is, um, you can see there's a Hydra symbol on there, and you can see, well, it says Hydra. It says the word Hydra. And then you can see their symbol. And then you see Von Strucker's name on there. It just says Strucker. And this is the man that was re that is responsible for giving Patriot, Patriot, oh my God. Pietro, <laughs> Pietro and Wanda, their powers, so to speak. And um, that commercial happens. So I feel like every time we see a commercial in each episode, it's going to be like a traumatic experience that Wanda has experienced. Because um, this is also coming in a seductive dreamlike state. And it wasn't something good that happened to her. So... That, that's at least what I took from that. I was like, okay, Von Strucker. This only occurred to me like my second or third time watching it or my fourth time. I keep, I kept adding to my notes. <laughs> anyway, after all of this happened, like I said, I'm not trying to tell you guys every single thing that happened in every single episode. If it's not important. Um, that happened, you know, right before the fundraiser starts, there is... A part where Wanda is helping Dottie clean up and she basically thanks Dottie for you know choosing her to help clean 
And she's like, I feel so lucky and Dottie being a bitch, you know? Like, what's her name would, said she would be? She was like, you are lucky. Or you should feel lucky. I was like, ooh. Okay. Um, I got distracted trying to make sure my lash fit properly. <laughs> but she's helping her clean up. And she's like, yeah, you should feel lucky. <laughs> and Wanda makes a face like, ha, 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 ha. Basically. So, she's talking. She's like, Dottie is telling Wanda that she doesn't really trust her and her husband. She's like, I've heard about you. And when she said that, I was like, well, they just got here. What have you heard, Dottie? What did you hear and from who? I... <laughs> You don't trust them and you've heard about them. What have you heard, ma'am? Miss Ma'am, what have what have you heard? Tell us. Because we don't know what you've heard. I wanna know. What did you hear from who? Hmm? My tea turned cold. But who did she hear it from? So as she's like, she said that part, and she's like, I don't trust you. So at this point. She feels threatened. Wanda feels threatened, and she's like, oh, no, 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 no. So while that happened, they zoom in on the radio. The radio is playing, help me, Rhonda, and turns to, who's doing this to you, Wanda? Who's doing this to you? Who's doing this to you, Wanda? And you know what I said to myself? Wanda is doing this to her goddamn self. Somebody else might be helping her, but she's doing this to her damn self. Wanda. Help yourself, okay? Help yourself. Because who, who, we don't know who's doing this to her. She's doing this to herself. So that was, I feel like that was once again reality trying to crash whatever illusion that Wanda has going on. Um, like I said, every time she feels threatened, she feels, she's like, oh no, 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 no. So why that happened, the radio shatters. Um, the cup in Dottie's hand also shatters. And once again, we see color. And the color we see is red for her blood. And um, almost every time something bad happens, once everything resets, everything just goes back to normal. Like nothing bad just happened. And Dottie's like, oh, I'm going to go clean this up, blah, blah, blah. A housewife is going to do her, do it herself, whatever. I forget her exact words. But um, she goes to clean it up. And they pan over to the radio again and the radio is not exploded like it just did so it's just like what is happening here okay so right after that is when the commercial happened i i remember i remember so now it's time for the uh what do you call it talent show for the children that don't exist in this town so talent show for the children is happening and um, every they had the little montage of people doing their own thing. So this is where we see Geraldine. I forgot to say, we met her first for the very first time at uh, the fundra fundraiser meeting where she introduced herself to Wanda as Geraldine, even though her name is Monica. But I'm trying to figure it out. Is she, did she lie on purpose or is she confused? Because everyone is confused and no one knows what's going on. So, this is the second time, and she's, like, backstage uh, for the fundraiser, and, you know, she's bringing the acts on stage or whatever, and Wanda is freaking out. They're about to start their show. Vision is running late, and then when he shows up, <laughs> Geraldine is like, is that him? Because, ma'am, is, is this him? Is this who's supposed to? This is who's supposed to help you? Okay. That's how she said it. And that was her look. She was like, it's, okay, girl, okay. Um, but he strolls up on stage. Well, not even on stage, backstage. And she's looking like, what the hell is wrong with him? He looks so disheveled. And, you know, Vision is always very well put together. So that was a quick sign. She should have known something was wrong. She brings him on stage anyway. And they do their little acts every time. 
you know, Vision is exposing these hoes, exposing everybody, okay? Telling us we don't know what's going on and telling the audience they don't know what's going on. Um, or we're dumb to think whatever is happening is what's actually happening. I was like, oh, huh, okay, okay, you're telling us something. And um, I think I'm going to make my lips glossy, like candy gloss. No, maybe? I don't know. But anyway, um, they perform. She's fixing every mistake. So it looks like a fun magic trick, you know, because that was their act. So everything looks normal. Every time he does something real and the crowd is almost like, what the hell is going on? She fixes it, makes it seem like, you know, everything is an illusion because everything is an illusion. <laughs> oh my God. Everything is an illusion. Um, so after the show, she was like, what is wrong with you? Why were you acting like that? And then they figured out what was going on. She pops the gum out of his system. And then she's like, let's sneak away before, you know, we're doomed from this town or something like that. And you know what? They leave and then they walk. They try to walk away or sneak away right where everybody's still at outside. Why didn't they go the back way? Girl. <laughs> I was like. You don't, see, you don't think they're going to see you if you're leaving? They didn't even try to sneak away. Anyway, that was not sneaking. That's what she thought they were doing. That was not sneaking to me. Um, so they were leaving. As they were leaving, tiptoeing, trying to run away, um, Dottie is like, you guys won. So they come on the, uh, not on stage. What's it on stage? To get their little trophy and their little award. And then they bring in Geraldine to help them as their assistant because, you know, she was confused as to why she was part of their act. But this was, for me, this was a little key moment when she says to Vision, how did you do it? And he was like, well, I'll never tell. Ask my assistant. And uh, Wanda is like, well, Something, something, and I'm not telling. And she, uh, Geraldine is like, I figured you would say that. It makes me think, like, did she ask her this already in another way before the helicopter crashed and before Geraldine came in here to infiltrate and get some answers? I feel like, I don't know, that was the meaning of something. When she says, I figured you would say that. Oh, I knew you would say that. How do you know she would say that? It, unless... Or she said, I'm not telling. And then Geraldine says something. I think she's saying like she knew she wouldn't talk because she's asked her so many times and she's not talking. I feel like that's what that means. Anyway, um, Geraldine knows something is up, but she's also clueless because she doesn't know what's going on. It's like she does know something is happening, but she doesn't know. Anyway, um... They leave, they go back home, they're having their sweet little moment like nothing happened. And um, when they hear another loud sound, when they're so happy and they're doing all of this, and all of a sudden, oh, she they make a joke like, something, something, we're going to get popcorn for the children. And as Wanda's getting up, Vision notices that her belly is pregnant she's pregnant she he noticed that and she didn't feel it that made me uh, also think she conjured it up while they were talking in her subconscious that's why she didn't even see that it was happening until vision pointed it out anyway that part happened and they're like in bliss in love blah 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 and then that's when the bang happened and vision is fed up okay he is fed up he's like uh-uh we ain't have the all we did in the afternoon at the public library was gossip. We didn't talk about this neighborhood watch. I'm going to find that damn tree or whatever is intruding this place. And I'm going to have a talk with it. And he goes outside and they see something coming up from the sewer. And it was another agent that looked like he had a sword uh, logo on his uniform. But we don't really see his face. We just see a bee swarming up after him. There are a lot of theories on that, but I don't want to like get into too much theories when I'm doing my recaps. Just something that's like obvious or that I notice that maybe other people notice or other people don't notice. But um 
it's just a lot of theories and I'm just like, I'm not trying to confuse people that don't read any comic books and they're just like, I just want to know what's going on. Um, so I think, well, not I think, I'm just, I see the sign there, the logo on his uniform, but obviously either this person is good and is trying to really penetrate and infiltrate, or they already have Wanda's psyche, um, and she's like, absolutely not. When she saw that, this is how we know Wanda is in control of everything that has happened thus far. Because she said no. And then she ran back the time to where she see that she's pregnant. And she touches Vision's face and he's turning red. He's turning back to his normal colors. And then the whole entire thing is in color. Um, I think mid-60s. Or, yeah, i say mid-60s or in, end of the 60s is when um, TV shows started to become in color. And that's kind of where that also went. But almost everything in her surroundings was also in red. Okay? <laughs> this is why we have this red lipstick going on. <laughs> um, yeah, so her outfit is in red. Her lipstick is red. Her hair is red. Um, like a, you know, like a hair color red and everything is just red, 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 red. And the episode ends again with someone still watching them. So leave all of your theories in the comment section. What I forgot to mention, um, what I didn't talk about, what you guys think. Um, like I said, it's a lot of like channels that have Easter eggs. If you're still confused on what the show is about, just give it a chance. I've seen some people, I would say 98% of the people that like on the internet everywhere, everyone is excited and everyone is understanding what's going on. But um, let's just have a discussion. And I hope you guys really like this format of this video. This might be a little rough around the edges because this is my first time doing it this way on this channel. So... Let me know how you want the next one to be or what you want me to review next. Um, I'm not sure. I think I want to do One Night in Miami. But let me know. Let me know. Let me know. And I'll see you in the next one.